Hi everyone, this is Ashish Kutiana leading the um, sales enablement session today. On December 6th, we are going to talk about the DORA research that's published annually on the state of DevOps. So let's start with what is DORA. Uh, DORA is an independent uh, research entity um, led by uh, some industry thought leaders such as Gene Kim, stands for DevOps Research and Assessment. And what they do every year is they run a comprehensive search and a large of adopted DevOps similar um, results, what's working, what's not working, and key findings that help us kind of understand, you know, what's going on in the world of DevOps at the enterprise level. And they've been doing this for over five years uh, with a survey total of about more than 30,000 responses since they have started. So this is a cumulative number since they've started. So we partnered with them. Um, GitLab was a sponsor in the 2018 research, and we wanted to share some results here for you to understand, you know, what is it that's working in these large enterprises and where the pitfalls are, where um, the enterprises need our help. And uh, we, we jointly presented a webinar with Gene Kim on this as well, a recording of which is available as a resource. The report itself is not available for us to distribute to our customers. We do not pay for the distribution rights. But the report is available internally for you to consume. Uh, we'll make that link available as well. So, Sheesh. I, I think it's a key point that if, if we want to get people's registration info, we can always have them register for the right. webinar recording, and the link to that is in the chat. So if you're going to reach out to someone or doing an email blast and you want people to come back and watch it, the link to it is in the uh, chat. So you can have people register for the webinar. Absolutely. So let's start with a key term that will be used in the report several times, right? It's called STO or STO performance. It stands for software delivery and operational performance. And what essentially is they define STO as the driver that helps these enterprises unlock competitive advantages against their competitors, right? So it's not just the practice of creating software, but it's also about how do you deliver it, how do you operationalize it, and how do you use it to drive business? So SDR is a key term that's used you know, several times in this study. And as they went through the study and as they looked at you know, the SDR performance, one thing that clearly stood out is cultural challenges and the efforts done around that to make the cultural practices better within different teams in these enterprises was a key driver to driving SDO performance. And, and it literally like falls into two big buckets. One is how do you let your teams perform to their true potential through autonomy and trust? So not only this survey, but as we talk to large enterprises, we find out that a mandate or a, a hand down, you know, kind of recipe of how to do DevOps usually does not work in large enterprises. However, influencing that, letting the teams have autonomy, trusting them to do the right things as long as they're improving is a key factor that really helps these large enterprises move forward. And secondly, creating a culture of learning from failure, we, uh, from failures, right? And, and successes, what has worked, what has not worked, what needs to be improved is really key. And we do this at GitLab also, right? We call it retrospectives. And so that's a very key um, um, thing to remember as we go into uh, big, large enterprises and our conversations with them. How are they influencing this culture and how are they learning from their failures and successes to move forward? Another key finding that the survey found this year was though large enterprises are adopting DevOps and they're starting to see successes and there are groups who are seeing successes and then there are groups who are not seeing the success as much and we'll talk about both of those groups. Among those who are actually finding um, that DevOps works for them, there's a key set of you know, enterprises that are performing much better than those who are in generally finding success with DevOps and they call them the elite performers. And some of the key metrics were, you know, they were deploying about 46 times more than um, their normal average enterprise doing DevOps. They were, you know, much faster to recover from incidents, from committing, you know, from commit to deploy, 
and then their change failure rate was about seven times lower. And this is important. Not only do you, you know, how do you improve, but then how do you take this to the next level and really become much better um, than your peers? And they found about 7% of these high performers were really elite performers. And this is key because we want to make our customers fit right in the category of elite or super elite, you know, performers. And how do we do that to help them? Some of the benchmarks that these enterprises are using to see if they're doing better or they're doing worse as they adopt these changes uh, are listed here. They looked at deployment frequency. They looked at the lead time for changes that it took them. Um, time to restore service if something went wrong and change failure rate. I won't go through each of the def definitions here. They're self-explanatory here. But as you start to see the difference between elite, high, medium, and low performers, you will see that everybody wants to be in the elite, uh, I'm sorry about that, in the elite category. And so what does it take to get there, right? That's what um, uh, this slide talks about. So what were the things that some of these very elite performers or even the ones who were doing well were doing right? Number one thing that they were doing right, among other things, was they were doing cloud right. And what does it mean to do cloud right is listed on the right hand column. It's not just about adopting cloud, but using cloud in ways that matter, right? And they found out that in the survey, only 20, 22% of the teams were actually doing this right. You know, self uh, on demand self service, the broad network access, resource pooling, I mean, they're listed here. If you did these things right, they were 23 times more likely that you're going to outperform your peers. And, you know, that's kind of um, very telling. We see that in our um, customers' environments as well. Another thing that these uh, enterprises who did this well, they're starting to adopt open source software. And the more teams that are adopting open source software, letting their teams experiment, work with new technologies, um, they're finding out that, um, their, their teams are more likely to do well because they have the autonomy, they, they use the software they want to use, they use software that actually works for them. And open source is a big um, component of that. Let's see. Also, the survey also found out that the industry didn't matter. We are seeing adoption across industries. Of course, we have traction in certain industries much more than others. But if they did this right, if they did the right things, the industry really didn't matter. From high tech to pharma, uh, to banking as we see ourselves, to automotive, um, there's adoption across all these industries pretty evenly. Of course, some industries are more mature and, and along the curve than some others, but don't be discouraged by the industry you walk in. This success is possible in large companies across any industry pretty much. Another key point that is really important is testing, specifically automated testing. Um, you know, from my previous years' experiences in different companies, as well as the surveys, as well as, you know, um, dialogues with lots of large uh, enterprises, testing is often a bottleneck to moving faster, to finding, you know, the feedback loop um, bugs faster. And the more you can automate your testing, the more you can do it on a continuous basis. It leads to better SEO performance, software delivery and operational performance. Like I promise you this term would be uh, popping up all the time. Um, we talked about culture, and culture is not just letting about teams take the autonomy and trusting them and you know giving them the ability to do things that work best for them, but putting in a culture of learning from failure and improving for, from that and not being kind of punitive when something fails is really important in these large industries. It's easier said than done, but those who get it right actually like do much better. Uh, we talked about autonomy. Um, I wanna jump quickly to the team, this slide. This slide is important. So we talked about what is really working, what are the key indicators and factors and habits that large successful enterprises are adopting to be successful. On the other hand, those enterprises who are adopting DevOps but not doing well, they are you know, looking at the wrong vectors, the wrong metrics, and the wrong habits to try to uh, adopt DevOps. 
be optimized for you know high lead times low deployment i mean sorry um <laughs> saying this wrong um but they do things kind of almost opposite to what we talked about or don't factor in you know some of the things we talked about leading to lower deployment frequency higher lead times um, and higher deployment failures and we need to guard against that we need to educate our customers uh, on how we do this um, and i jumped to this slide and this slide will be available we talked about how gitlab helps as well as how gitlab does this ourselves and this slide was meant to convey you know the concept of mvc and you know how you can get to smaller batch sizes etc I want to wrap this up so that we can have some time for questions. But to summarize, you know, what the survey found, the ways that enterprises improving their software delivery and operational performance, um, you know, four key points. They're adopting the cloud characteristics that we talked about in the ways that they're listed to really realize the benefits of cloud adoption. Um, the culture, the you know the the practice um, the support from upper management and the investment in technology are really important um I, we did not talk about uh outsourcing but um you know companies are trying to figure out whether outsourcing works or not and how it works or you know to help them down their um devops transformation and the um verdict on that is still kind of not in uh, but if you do take a decision, it needs to be decisive. You need to empower the teams you outsource uh, and work very closely with them. And finally, you need to optimize for throughput, stability, and availability as metrics. We, we talked about in you know, one slide, what are the four key metrics that all these large organizations keep their eye on, and how do they continuously improve and optimize for that improvement, giving their teams uh, you know, the leeway to do that. So I'm going to end the sharing at this point and open it up to questions so that we can answer um, you know, any questions that you might have, any sharing um, and findings that we can discuss.